has declined to proceed in. The eternal God is thy refuge, and underneath are the everlasting arms. For I know that my Redeemer liveth, and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. Though after my skin worms destroy this body, yet in my flesh shall I see God. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Why art thou cast down, O my soul? And why art thou disquieted within me? Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him, who is the health of my countenance and my God. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore we will not fear, though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Has thou not known, has thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord and the Creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary. There's no searching of his understanding. He gives power to the faint, and to them that have no might, he increases strength. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. We have um, a selection. Is that person here? Huh? Could we have someone come and lead a hymn? Any hymn?
Can you make your way here and read a scripture? Isaiah 40th chapter, verse 28 and 29. Hast thou not known, hast thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary. There is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint. And to them that have no might, he increases strength. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up on wings like eagles. They shall run and not get weary. They shall walk and not faint. This is the scripture, Isaiah 40th chapter, verses 28 through 29. May God bless this reading. Heavenly Father, Father God, we thank you for what you are to us. Lord, we know that this is a time of grieving, but Lord, we ask your will to strengthen the family, to strengthen the friends, and the loved ones, Lord God, move as only a God like you can. We know that you can. We know that you're able. But, Lord, we need your strength. We need your power. We need you to move as only a God like you shall. Father, and we ask you, Lord God, to comfort by your Holy Spirit this family, these people, Lord God, and give them what they need in this time we bless you and we magnify you we honor and adore you we love you lord and we thank you for all that you are and do we ask you now in the precious name of jesus to do that which is according to your will in jesus name amen by Jackie Barnett. <clears throat> the poem is entitled, Fly Away Angel. You use laughter to recover from the trials <coughs> life threw your way. All it took was a monster drink and a sit on the porch to make your day. Being the second oldest, you cared for so many. Living in the home you grew up in, memories were plenty. You loved to dress from head to toe, sharp as a tack. <coughs> you fought many good fights, now heaven wants you back. You have been requested to be a chosen one, to be reunited with your mother, your father, and your son. So fly away, angel, for God is waiting to see you again. You will be terribly missed as a father, as a brother, and as a friend. One heart of gold stopped beating, two shiny eyes at rest. God broke our hearts to prove to us he only takes the best. To some, he will be forgotten, and others just a part of the past. But to us who loved and lost you, your memory will always last. 
to the family and friends of Brother Arnold and our beloved members, Pam and Tamisha and family, we, the pastor, officers, members, and friends of the <coughs> Baptist Church of Valley Station, Kentucky, extend to you our heartfelt sympathy in your time of sorrow. We pray that you hold on to God's unchanging hands, and if you lean and depend on the Lord, he will see you through. Matthew 5 and 4 states, Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. We know that words can't take away your sadness that you feel right now, but please know that we care and that you are in our thoughts and prayers. And may God's love be your strength and comfort. Gone away, but not leaving memories that can never take away. Memories that will linger while upon this earth will stay. Please know that we are just down the road and we are here to comfort you. Done in the order, Jackie Barnett, our church clerk, First Lady Ramonda and William Hodge, Sr. They definitely send their blessings, care, and love. Church resolution in memory of Nathaniel Arnold. No matter what your trials are or how big your mountains seem, the Lord is there to see you through. He's got all extremes. He'll go to all extremes. The Lord is there to see you through. He'll see you on your strings. So if you cross, seems hard to bear, and you know not what to do, the one who loves you most of all is there to see you through. Whereas in God's holy wisdom, he has called the thing at home, the memories of tabernacle of praise, church, God, and Christ, wish to express our deepest sympathy to our dear brother and sister Maurice and Jean Arnold and the entire Arnold family. Your grief is our grief and you have our sincere prayers. And this is done in order of Pastor Julius Burroughs. At this time, we'll have a solo by Tamisha Knuckles. Thank 
Everybody know us has come out of the book of John. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God, and God was that Word. That Word established all things. It gave life. We have to repent under salvation and believe in righteousness. That that light came into the world and brought all truth to all men. He died for all of us. And believe that he is the son of God that came in there and did all these things. Butch is all right. That's a earthly vessel right there. Butch ain't in there no more. The spirit is gone home to rest. But what we have to realize, the one that's across from you, the one in the back of you, the one in front of you, are you ready? Are you ready to go? This is why we have to be assured because it is a thin line to eternal life and eternal hell. It's a thin line. The Bible says hard for a righteous man to enter. A righteous, unrighteous will not enter. So we say to one another, be faithful. Be faithfulness to your righteousness. And come to know him as who he is, Lord and Savior. The one that is coming back to take the rest of us home. If the one that do not leave before then. So don't cry for him. He's all right. Cry for that one next to you, the back of you, the one at home. Get them ready for this journey that we all will be home together in one accord with the Father, the Son, and of that Holy Spirit, our Master that will shepherd us for a thousand years. We have eternal peace, eternal joy that the world can't give you here. But you have all of that when we get home. And God bless you and show others the way. Thank you. Are there any other ministers that, that care to give remarks? Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. 
He's good. And his mercy endureth forever. Oh, give thanks unto the God of God. Because he is good. And his mercy endureth forever. I just come to stand to comfort you. I come to stand to encourage you that God is a God of love. You heard what the minister before me said, and all of those things are so true. And now we need comfort. God is there for that. Now we need assurance. God is there for that. Now, we need a God that will console our very heart. He's there for that. I want to encourage you to hear what was said before me and take that to heart. But while I encourage you to do that, I encourage you to seek a God that only can comfort you. He is the only one that can assure you of what you need personally, individually. God can move in your behalf for you. I just stand to encourage you to trust him to do that which what you need. Are there any other ministers that choose to say anything? If not at this time, we will have a solo by Reverend Andreas Price. Is she here? He is here. Huh? He is here. Yeah, oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. That's all right. <laughs>
and shenanigans <laughs> but that's all right for the word tells me in Romans 3 23 that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God but there is a way out for Bush and there is a way out through the modern technology across 110th street and this journey to the final destination are not completed on this earthly playing field. Yeah. Amen. The journey begins in this short span of time we call life. But when we make the final tr transition, it is not on this physical level that we know is life. And the mad struggles we have engaged in will be unavailable to us and meaningless. Yeah. Let me clear up what I have said through the word. Turn with me, if you will, to Job 14 and 1. And if you would stand with me for the reading of the word. I'll be reading from the New King James Version, and it says, This is a short scripture, and these are the words. Man that is born of a woman is of a few days and full of trouble. Let us pray. Eternal God, I submit this, thy weak and humble bond servant. You are the pot, I am the clay. Take me, break me, melt me, mold me, shape me, have thine own way. Please hide me in the shadow of the cross. But should I peek out, let none be seen but a servant leaning hard on thee. So may the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Let every praying heart say amen. 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 
Amen. You may be seated in the presence of Almighty God. Now, I was not able to do what we preachers call taking a text until I received the information that Nathaniel Butch Arnold was baptized on 5 16, 2009 at the Greater New Beginnings Christian Church which is located at 2100 West Oak Street by the pastor, Darrell E. Wilson. When I received that news, my soul shouted hallelujah. And I thought back to that old gospel hymn which says, you don't know like I know what the Lord has done for me. You weren't there when he raised me. You weren't there when he saved me. So nobody knows what the Lord has done for me. And if anybody here knows what I'm talking about, why don't you just take a moment here and stand on your feet and somebody tell him thank you. Thank you Lord. Somebody tell him thank you in this place. Thank you. Tell him thank you. So now as we prepare to consummate this homegrown going service for our dear father, brother, friend, and loved one, Butch on, I want to, with your prayers, and the aid of the Holy Spirit, preach briefly from the thought, we're getting ready for the final destination. We're getting ready for the final destination. Is that all right? Are you sure that's all right? Well, if that's all right, tell somebody kind of close to you <laughs> that we're getting ready for the final destination. Yeah. Now I have no idea why the most high God would call one such as me with all my faults and hang-ups to his service. Because for most of my life I backed out, flipped out, weaved out, copped out, pimped out, pumped out, simped out, pumped out, shot out and conned out and passed out until mercy and grace brought me out and then he called me to preach his gospel. And if you look up the gospel in the dictionary along with the primary definition, it is the good news of Jesus Christ. Yes. So a preacher is called to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ, which is the ultimate truth, and rightly divide the word of God. So that scripture we read in Job means that all of us who have come from the womb of a woman, and I just assume that all of us are included in that description, that our days are short, numbered at best, and that we will all experience trials and tribulations on this short journey. Yeah. This is not our home for real. That's right. That's right. And we have not yet reached our final frontier. In other words, we all have a reservation without cancellation. And we all have an appointment with the death angel, affectionately known as the Grim Reaper. If I live to see the 16th of February this year, I'll turn 72 years old. And I now more clearly than ever completely understand that I have more time behind me than I have in front of me. Amen. So right now I'm living to die so I can live again. Amen. If you don't understand that, just hold on and I'll explain to you more about that later. But you need to understand that this clearly is not our final destination. There's a song by my favorite gospel singer, Lee Williams, that says, if you call me in the morning and I fail to answer my phone, I might be getting ready or I might already be gone. Because I just stopped by to say hi on my way home. So once again, we just passing through. So where is home? Last week when pa Pam called to inform me of Bush's passing, I remarked that I was glad that he hadn't suffered. But I was reminded through the Spirit that he had suffered and was suffering until God released him. And I thought back to the world and through my own personal experience, and I realized that we all suffer in this journey called life. There is no way possible to experience the joys of life without experiencing the sorrows of life. Amen. They both come wrapped up and tied up together in this package we call life. 
But I also reflected that I had expected such news because Butch was becoming agitated and didn't want to be where he was. And it was then I realized he was in transition. One foot in this world and one foot in another dimension. And the last time we actually talked, he had been insisting about going home. I believe that he clearly knew that he was on his way from this place yes, yes, to a place of joy, yes, yes. unspeakable joy. Yes. So I knew then that he had taken the master's hand and was on his way. For the word in 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 5 and 6 says that to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. I'm sure that he knew he was on his way to a place he'd been striving for his entire life. A place where his mother and father, son, and many friends were. He was on his way home. He was on his way to a place there would be no more pain and no more suffering. He was on his way to a place where there would be no more anxious moments and no more lonely nights. A place where there would be no more deception and no more sleepless nights. Butch was on his way to a place where there would be no more dialysis and no more rush trips to the hospital. Butch was on his way to a place where there would be no more heart attacks and no more strokes. Butch was on his way to a place where there would be no more locked doors. A place where there would be no more drug deals and no more murders. A place that, where there would be no more cancer and no backbiting and no more finger pointing. And as he lay there before they closed the casket, I could see in his face joy of the unspeakable can that passes all understanding. So Butch has made his transition to the final destination, covered in the blood of Jesus. Butch is all right. Now what about the rest of us? We all still must make the inevitable journey to the final destination. Yes. We all have yet to make it across 110th Street. So I pose the question to all of us here this morning. Are you ready for your final destination? I want to tell a story, it's a true one. Over 25 years ago, I had a shooting gallery in Butch whenever he wasn't in the penitentiary, that's where he'd be. And when all the girls and all the high rollers and things had left, it'd just be me and Butch. And I'd tell him, I'm going to walk you home. He was staying over on Broadway somewhere. And I'd walk him home, and he'd get home and say, I'm going to walk you back home. <laughs> And we'd walk all night long. <laughs> and we did that not one time, but many times. Like the, the Hebrews, after they were out of bondage, wandering in the wilderness. But because of this Christ, we both were able to stop wandering in the wilderness. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Father. For John 3, 16 says, For God so loved the world yes, he did. that so whosoever yep. believed in him yes. should not yep. perish, but have everlasting yep. life. And Romans 10 and 9 says, If you confess with your mouth and believe with your heart that Jesus was raised from the dead, then thou will be saved. So are you ready? Thank you, Lord. Are you ready? Everybody got to go this way. You can't get out. And I can't ask that question in good conscience without making that opportunity available to you right now. So the doors of the church are open. And I know that this is a funeral home, but Jesus speaks from Matthew 18 and 20. Wherever I two or more are gathered in my name, I will be in the midst. So he's here now. So I invite you to come. If you haven't accepted Christ, at this time I invite you to come. 
I got a couple of baptisms in my church this this week. But if you don't want to be baptized at Fifth Street, we'll baptize you. We'll see to it that you get baptized wherever. That's right. We want to use Butch's home going yeah. as an opportunity for someone else to find salvation. Amen. Would you come? Thank you. Would you come? If you'd stand and recite the Lord's Prayer with me.
took him in such an expedient fashion. We pray now for the family where she bind them together in the spirit of love, togetherness and forgiveness. We ask that you would keep us in the coming days and continue to bless us. We ask for your promise, your provision, your protection, and most of all, your presence. And those of us that go to the cemetery, we ask for safe traveling grace. And now it is in the massless, marvelous, magnificent name of Jesus the Christ that we pray and last it all. Let every pray heart say amen. 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 This now concludes the homegoing services of my dear friend, Bojan. Palmers, please.